Welcome back to part two of this video series. We're looking at the repair and renovation of the Pi P114BQ radio. In this uh, particular video, we're going to look at the repair of the electronics, the reconstruction of the radio and final testing. I've removed the capacitors from the circuit and what actually tested these out of circuits, uh, remember you, you can't test capacitance in circuit, but you can test the equivalency of resistance. Uh, the electrolytic actually tested okay. It's pretty much on specification as to what you would expect for an eight microfarad capacitor um, and uh, 150 volt version. So it had quite a low uh, ESR. Different map for these wax capacitors. Uh, this one tested okay. It's fairly intact, it's a little bit tacky. Uh, but it came in on specification, but this one here just literally just fell apart um, in my hands. It's just um, not registering anything really. Um, just doesn't feel good anyway. So uh, the other two are a little bit off as well. So um, I'm glad to change those. Uh, I think they've pretty much had it. And so they don't really feel good. They're all waxy and gloopy. Um, so I'm glad I've done that. So it's just really a case of putting in the new capacitors now and um, that should be the components change and what I'll do, I'll put some contact cleaner in the uh, potentiometer and the switch and the little switch on the side here, might as well clean that up. And then it's a question of putting the whole thing back together. So these are the capacitors I'm going to use to change the old ones. Um, the electrolytic, I'm going to use a 10 microfarad, 350 volt capacitor to replace the eight microfarad one. It's a close enough value. My only concern is that that radio never saw any mains being a battery radio. And now I'm going to put mains inside there. So I'm just wondering if this is going to be large enough to filter any mains hum. There's only one way to find out. So I may be changing that for a large one, possibly. Uh, we'll see. The wax capacitors are gonna be replaced by these um, polypropylene film capacitors. These are audio grade units uh, with a 630 volt rating. So they'll be ideal, really a similar size as well to uh, the ones I've taken out. So I'll just get on with that and solder them into the um, printed circuit board. So I've changed all the um, paper wax capacitors with uh, appropriate replacements. Um, they are audio grade, but don't particularly need to be audio grade on, on these old valve radios. Um, what I want to do is, is I've got some molded um, paper capacitors uh, on the PCB and I want to replace those with these modern replacements. Um, molded paper tend to be unreliable simply because they're made of paper. Um, and, and that rots over time. And they tend to be in the lower picofarad ranges, so I've got to find some suitable replacements. I've got some 100 volt polyester film capacitors, um, which I think are a good choice for, for the um, 100 picofarad capacitors. And the 27 picofarad so I've got a 30 picofarad, just standard disc ceramic there, which is a 50 volt rating. Uh, I'm not too worried about the voltage rating because this capacitor sits in the grid circuit and there's only about eight volts potential difference in that grid circuit. Um, so it really comes down to an interesting point about do you need audio grade capacitors? You could spend a lot of money um, putting audio grade capacitors in when it's just re really an inexpensive valve radio, which the sound reproduction isn't going to be fantastic so you have to just bear that in mind you might be spending money that you don't really need to spend uh, and I'm taking that view I would use audio grade where I can because I buy them in bulk and I can use them for other projects especially the 630 volt capacitors they can go in a lot more equipment so if you buy a lot of those obviously you might as well keep using them but um, I just needed some lower voltage ones or, or cheaper ones really for this uh, particular project. So I, I'm, I'm just going to go with these. So I'll get those replaced now and uh, that's really the PCB finished. So it'd be a case of bolting it back together and powering it on. So that's all the capacitors in the 
into circuit board and the dark green actually sits in very well with the uh, uh, the vintage components same with the yellow ones actually I think um, uh, they don't look out of place so I'm quite pleased with that um, didn't take too long to do all of those incidentally the paper capacitors actually measured very well but um, you know if I'm going to be using the radio daily I don't really want to be going back in there again uh, if and when they do go so I need to turn my attention now to the mains before I put the radio together. So this is the battery eliminator which I bought. These are off um, eBay the, in the UK and they're manufactured by uh, a gentleman there. Uh, so he either makes them or, or gets them made for him. Um, but these have got um, a 90 volt high tension supply and a 1.4 volt low tension supply for the heaters. Um, quite simple to make actually you could um, these are just an encapsulated transformer 240 volts in with um, 12 volts out and then it's just a step up uh, DC to DC converter because the high tension anodes of the um, valves don't really take a lot of current so it's something you could put together yourself really um, but this is in the form factor of a, a B126 battery which um, the radio took. Uh, in fact, you can download the templates for the batteries on the uh, internet, so you could actually print those off and make a case um, to put around this, which looks like the EverReady battery. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna sit this um, in the base of the radio because I want to take it out easily to use on other projects uh, as, as I want to need to do that. So um, uh, it's really just getting on now and just putting the whole thing back together. So it's just a case of soldering back the lug onto the tuner capacitor, reconnecting the tuner capacitor and the speakers, and that's the radio reassembled, ready for testing. For electrical main safety, I placed an earth connection on the chrome faceplate. So I've got everything uh, wired up as it should be. Uh, I've got the aerial connected and the battery eliminator is in place. I'm using my uh, dim lamp current limiter as well just in case i'm not sure if i'll need it so it's just a case of turning this on now and seeing if we get any noises and um, there's really not a lot uh, you won't hear it on camera but there is just a hum there which tells me the switch is working yeah so that's something i need to look now i was hoping it's just going to work um, but I think my strategy now would be just to have a closer look at the printed circuit board and circuitry to make sure nothing's disconnected, nothing's broken. Um, probably need to test the valves, that's easier said than done because I don't have the right voltages but I can work something out. And I'll probably backtrack from the audio stages to the RF stages to see um, why we're not getting any sounds. I'm doing the tuning but there's really... Um, there's not enough just uh, crackle in this radio for me to be happy that it's actually working. Um, players and girls, today is your day. The more you can ride it, the more you can smile about it, the, the more it sustains you over your career. James, you're not a... Yeah, I mean, because if you're playing enough... Hang on, John Murray. So as you can hear, um, all you needed was a, a touch up on a couple of solder joints and the whole thing burst into life. Um, yeah, I turned it on when it's scoring a goal there. But that's talk sport in uh, radio in the UK. So here's the radio complete, not looking new, but it is 70 years old. Um, but more importantly for me, it is working.
So that concludes the um, repair and renovation of this particular radio. And, and, and I love it. It's a lovely compact size. I use this a lot, just um, streaming music to it uh, in the evenings. Just fantastic, lovely tone on it. Um, so I'm really glad to took this project on. It's a great little easy radio to work on uh, as a first radio. I haven't gone through any of the alignment. Um, I will do that really just for practice at some point. I may may not make a video on that, um, but I didn't need to do any alignment on this because it's working well for my needs. I did modify it with the mains, um, but I'm not selling this radio on. And I just wanted something that was much more convenient to use. So it's just been a fantastic exercise um, and it's a well-loved radio. It was destined for the skip, um, but it's been rescued and, it, and it's now working and playing a useful role. So if you like these videos, uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe. Um, that's really appreciated. That said, thank you very much for watching.